All right, friends. With 52 of us here, that's five times a minion. That is awesome. Let's share some Torah. Today's going to be a little bit heavy, um, but it's appropriate for it to be that heavy because we are transitioning into Parshat Noach. It is um, really, really complicated to see... Um, to see this text and to see our world this day. So let's review a little bit where we are. I'll give a little bit of an intro, give us some text from the end of last week's Torah portion and then the beginning of this week's. So we began the Torah again, thank God. We began life again, thank God. The vulnerability of life is now our responsibility because the world is inhabitable. But you and I are living in a moment where we know that the dire warnings of Parshat Noach of a world that is destroyed after having just been created, at least textually speaking. That's a true thing, both in terms of the environment itself and in terms of humanity, what it is to be a human. As Heschel said, to be only human is to be less than human. So here we are. Here we are. Now, where are we? Just last week we read about the creation of the universe, and if you remember, God divides between the waters to make an upper water and a lower water. And then when the flood comes in this week's Parsha, God unstops the heavens and the floodgates of the deep, which means that the waters that were separated in order to make room for creation crash back down, reversing creation itself. The ark that we typically imagine in childish ways with happy animals and people on the deck of a ship with a flag and smiling hippos and giraffes, that's all very sweet. But in fact, the ark itself was more like a submarine, submerged by the undoing of creation. And what we have to ask ourselves in order to truly enter this Parsha is, how does creation become undone? What warrants such a terrible, terrible thing? Especially because while we might be angry, legitimately so, at God for causing such devastation, and I'm not letting God off the hook, the Torah text presents God's action as a response to our action. And what is it that we did that could be so bad to warrant such a reaction from a God who was so deeply in need of our company to invent partners in creation and then to see it all go wrong? Listen to the end of last week's Parsha. Vayar Adonai, this is chapter 6 verse 5. Again, chapter 6, verse 5 of Genesis, with a translation by Everett Fox. Vayar Adonai ki rabba ra'ata adam ba'aretz v'chol yetzer machshavot libo rak ra kol hayom. This is the translation. God saw that great was humankind's evil doing on earth, and every form of their heart's planning was only evil all the day. Then God was sorry. Vayinachem Adonai ki asaita adam ba'aretz. God regretted having created people. And God was sad to God's heart. Now, I have no idea, really, what that means. First of all, it must sound strange to some of our ears that God regrets. But the God of the Torah learns, experiments, grows, changes. And then God was sorry that God had created humankind and it pained God's heart. Listen to verse 7. God said, I will blot out humankind whom I created from the face of the earth, from human to beast, to crawling thing, to the birds of the heavens. I am sorry I made them. But Noah found favor in God's eyes. And because Noah found favor, Noah found favor in God's eyes, Noah and his family were spared. But again, I want to return to the question, what could we have done that was so bad? The text actually doesn't answer the question. The text doesn't say what the specific deeds, but it says that adam ba'aretz, we were doing bad. The bad we did grew. And that, my friends, for you and me in this moment is a human responsibility. We as a Jewish community, supported by UJA in this platform of our gathering, have been present in response to degradation on this earth, which means of the earth itself. We have responded to homophobia. We have responded to anti-black racism. We respond to anti-Asian racism. We answer to so many things. We respond 
to food insecurity. We respond to domestic violence. We respond to poverty, homelessness. And that is not only in the Jewish community. We respond. So when the attack turns at the Jewish people, how do we respond? Because the ambiguity of the wrong being done in our text for this week's Parsha makes us responsible for understanding where the wrong is, what the wrong is, how severe the wrong is, and what a human response must be in order to avoid the cataclysm of the destruction of creation. As partners in creation, we have multiple mandates. One of them is to maintain the world, and the other is to make it better. But maintaining the world means facing threats within it. Those threats can be to the world itself or to the inhabitants. And Jews respond when others are threatened. Jews must respond when Jews are threatened. So too must the partnerships that we create in coalition with other communities, such as the faith leaders with whom I traveled to Israel just this past May, such as the partners with us in the work of gun violence prevention here in New York where the homicide rate is up. That must extend itself into the work of protecting the Jewish community and responding to anti-Semitism wherever, wherever it rises. And it actually never went anywhere. Over the last six years, friends, it is clear that we have hit a new low where the anti-Semitism and the racism and the hatreds of all kinds that have been present in the sewers of American society it's now unleashed to the point where my teacher, our leader, our CEO, Eric Goldstein, who's a CEO of UJ Federation, says we saw anti-Semitism in, in Poe, that was the Chabad that uh, suffered a gun violence attack in California, Jersey City, Muncie, Colleyville. Right? We could keep on naming this. These are part of a trend in American society, but it is also clear that these are targeted attacks, anti-Semitic attacks in America. So this is what Eric says. We see it now almost every day on the streets of Brooklyn. Attacks on visibly Jewish people in our own backyard have become so commonplace that they barely garner mention. And we see it regularly on social media platforms. These last weeks from Kanye West and former President Trump with familiar tropes about Jewish power and dual loyalty being broadcast to many, many people, including flyers distributed in Brentwood, California today. Today. My friend Shannon Watts, who is the founder of Moms Demand Action Against Gun Violence, posted on her social media, and I lifted it and posted it on my own, images, flyers that say every exec at Disney is Jewish, every leader in the Biden administration is Jewish. It was pictures and names of Jews with Jewish stars plastered on their faces and those flyers placed in mailboxes in Brentwood, California. To see those flyers and to see language like Kanye West saying the thing about it being Adidas who sponsors Kanye West. I can say anti-Semitic things and Adidas can't drop me. Now what? Now what? Well, now this. Friends, this Parsha tells us what happens when human beings stop acting like human beings. The floodgates of hatred open up and God's creation is erased in devastating ways. We will continue to respond with strength and with power and with Jewish solidarity and with communal recognition that we do not stand alone. We should not turn ourselves into an immobilized ghetto in response to anti-Semitism in 2022. We have to respond with solidarity, with confidence, with strength, and yes, with the funding it takes to make all of this happen. So number one, make a gift, friends, to UJA. Find other organizations like the ADL that stand up against hatred of all kinds and call this out, not only on social media. Call it out by organizing. Demand a response. This cannot be. The overpass in L.A. this weekend, Donna, that you are pointing to, was directly in response to Kanye, and I will not share the images of the people standing on the overpass making salutes that have absolutely infected our world with hatred in the last century. This is a moment, friends, where we stand up. 
we stand proud and loud as Jews. We have everything to celebrate, everything to be proud of. And if you ask the question, which is a natural thing that happens in Jewish community, what caused the anti-Semitism? The answer is anti-Semitism caused anti-Semitism. As Herzl said, the founder of modern political Zionism, no matter how much we've tried to fit in around the world, there is hatred against the Jews. There's nothing we can do to change ourselves that will erase anti-Semitism. No matter what kind of Jew we are, no matter if I'm a black Jew, an Asian Jew, a Caucasian Jew, if I'm a man, a woman, I'm a trans Jew, I'm a gay Jew, I'm a lesbian Jew, no matter what kind of Jew I am, there will always be someone willing to hate me, which means my children, which means my parents, which means there is hatred. The canary in the coal mine when it comes to hatred in the world is the Jew. Mark Twain said so, and so did Hannah Senesh. So friends, every generation we are called to respond with more love than the hatred can attack, more creation than the destruction can tear down. And in a moment where all of humanity in this Parsha, all of humanity is doing wrong, the Noach Matzachem, somehow Noach found favor in God's eyes. And we can have a conversation about how good really was Noach, but in a world where hatred was rampant, Noach found favor in God's eyes. The Makom She'ein Anashim Hishtadel Liot Ish. In a place where people are not being people, be a person. Be a loud and proud Jew. And friends, not everyone in our community is Jewish. I want to thank you for being part of a Torah community and feeling the love, because this is what the world is meant to have. Shared joy, an interaction of truths, good stuff building the world, because an entirely Jewish world would be a whole lot less fun. We are called friends. To, to love our neighbors, and to say, love us back. We will stand with you. You stand with us. We can make the world a better place. We can do it in Australia. We can do it in America. We can do it in Saudi Arabia. Those are places where people have come for Torah, to this community. We have friends all around. Let's not be quiet about this moment of vulnerability. So friends, I want to bless you first of all, with open eyes and strong hearts. Clear vision that this world requires a response and all the sweet rainbow promises in this Parsha will not keep the hatred at bay. It's going to require bravery, courage, you and me. Here we go. This is a week where we raise our voices. We stand on our rooftops and we say, I am a Jew and I am proud. And nothing holds that back. Nothing is strong enough to hold back the love. I'll have more to say about this tomorrow, I'm sure. Took some effort to stop just now. But bless you, friends, with strength. Bless you.